Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about stabilization. Next to the lens choice and the camera choice, the stabilization that creates the motion of your video is extremely important. Whether you're using a glide cam, a slider, a monopod, or any other type of gear, the feeling that that creates and the way that it moves the camera is gonna create a certain emotion in the viewer. In a Transformers movie by Michael Bay, when they've got the camera sweeping through in a helicopter shot and zooming in on the person as the car is exploding, you know, it creates a certain feeling versus 2001 A Space Odyssey when it's just that shot of the column. Or in a Born Identity movie where the camera's really shaky and it feels like you're in the action versus something like Lord of the Rings where you're like gliding over the hills of Middle Earth. The motion of the camera really creates a strong feeling and emotion in the viewer as well as progresses the storyline forward. So today we're going to be talking about three awesome pieces of stabilization that anyone out there can afford and three that we love to use on our shoots. So that's gonna be the glide cam, the slider, and the monopod. So let's jump right into the slider and show you guys how you can use that one. Sliders are a really great way to add a lot of cinematic production value to whatever you're shooting. They're really great for real estate, for wedding videos, short films, interviews they're really great for, for adding a nice subtle movement to it and interest. But you know, really, there's a lot of different ways that you can use sliders, so I wanna give you guys our favorite little tips and tricks right now. The first thing you wanna learn about when working with sliders is definitely foreground, AKA putting something out of focus up front. And so I'm gonna use this handy dandy tree right here to get a shot of these nice people in the park. And then I'm gonna use, you can see how I've got the tree kind of in the foreground right now, right there. As I reveal the people, it's like setting up a scene. Okay, another good trick to use is racking the focus. And so you can put the viewer's focus from the tree first, then over to the people playing football. So before I was revealing them, how about a nice push-in shot? A push-in is a great way to like intro a character or a scene. And again, using the, uh, the foreground is a great way to add a lot of depth and dimension to your shots. So now I have it pushing forward towards them with the tree out of focus. Now you can see if I was actually, in contrast, if I was just right here and I had no tree in the foreground, it looks a lot like this. Whether you're sliding forwards to push in on a subject, pulling backwards to leave them feeling alone or creating a finality to a scene, you know, having that foreground is really important. The next thing I wanna talk about is something we like to call the parallax effect. So with this tree, again, as a subject, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it as well as turn the camera. This is really great for wedding videos if you're showing the wedding ring or interviews if you want to keep the focus on the person. You can see how much more depth there is. The, the tree just becomes totally separated from the background. They become the only point of focus in the entire thing. All right, and our final tip for uh, awesome slider moves, it's a great way to create an interesting up and down slide. So you can see right here that I'm gonna take this take it off and then I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, the plate 90 degrees, and then put it back on. And with the plate rotated 90 degrees, the slider at an angle, it creates a nice up and down shot. Imagine a family walking by right here, introing them, nice walk through the park. All right, sliders, a great way to add a lot of production value. There's a lot of different sliders out there on the market. Our friend Tim was just looking at one called the Doozy. We love our Edelchrome. We think it's a great piece of a, a gear. We love the engineering of it. Um, Kessler also has a lot of them. There's the Pocket Dolly, the Cine Slider, the Second Shooter. You can also get gears for gears and motors for your slider to create sliding time lapses. You can do some motion control. If you have the slider going at the same rate multiple times, you can interstitch different shots in there and create a really cool effect. So sliders, definitely recommend them. Whether you're getting a cinematic wedding intro shot or you're pushing in on that character or you're pulling out for that final shot in your short film, a slider is a crucial piece of gear. From there, let's hop over to the monopod and see what that's got to offer us. Here's our monopod. We've got the Manfrotto 561 BHDV. It's got a nice fluid head. It's got feet on the bottom. And in rare cases, it'll even stand up if there's no wind around, but don't rely on it. Because of their quick, light, easy to maneuver, small spaces, tiny corners, monopods are really great for weddings, for events, for corporate work, and for anything with a lot of travel and movement is gonna be needed. Anything run and gun, I would really recommend a monopod for. So let's jump into a couple quick tips and tricks for monopods and we'll get on our way. 
There are a couple cool things that a monopod can do that a tripod really has a lot of trouble with. One of them is pushing in. So check it out, you get a little bit of foreground here with the flowers, then I can push into the house, and just like a slider without all the, uh, the legs, you get this awesome shot. Another great tip for the monopod is to use yourself as a tripod. So imagine you've got this one leg here, but then you've got your own two legs. So you add a couple points of stability, throw the arm underneath, grab right here and right here, and then your wiggly shot instantly becomes perfectly stable. So adding more points of contact between yourself and the camera when holding the monopod can make a kind of shaky wiggly shot into a perfectly static stable shot. And then the final piece of advice we want to give is very similar to the slider. If you were to take the base plate, turn it 90 degrees, and then use it on top of the monopod, it's going to give you a lot of that similar feeling of the slider. So check it out. Take it, turn it 90 degrees, and instantly you've got a nice slider shot. As you can see, monopods have a ton of versatility. You can get creative in so many ways with these guys on set. As far as recommendations for which one to purchase, I really recommend something with a fluid head and feet if you want to be serious about it, but there are really basic models where it's just a stick. The latest Manfrotto monopod is the MVM500A with the 500 fluid head, and there's the Obin ACM1400 if you're looking for something very basic. They range in prices from 250 to about 50 bucks. Either one is a great deal. Jump on it. Let's hop over to glide cams and see what we can do. The monopod, as you guys can tell, is an incredibly versatile tool. It works really well in really tight areas and it's just really easy and fast and just on point. It's a great piece of gear. Next thing we're gonna look at is the glide cam. This is the glide cam that we've got. It's a stabilized ball bearing system that pivots it and counteracts the weight using these weights here at the bottom with the camera up at the top. Really simple system, but it really revolutionized the game back in the late, early 70s, I think, when it came out. The Steadicam was the original. Now there's Glidecam, there's lots of different alternatives. But let's jump into a couple tips and tricks for when you do get one. The first thing I should mention about the Glidecam is that compared to the monopod in the slider, the Glidecam is incredibly difficult to master. I myself am no master with it. I usually let Gabe behind the camera handle those things. But with time, you can definitely master it. The first thing you wanna do is figure out how to balance it. If your camera is not balanced, then as you're going through, it will get all tilted, it will go this way, that way, it'll get really drunk feeling, and the end result for the viewer will not be a beautiful feeling of a wide opening cinematic shot. Instead, it'll be a feeling like I'm drunk and walking through the wedding. So make sure you get your camera balanced on the glide cam before you set it up. If you plan on running really fast and getting some super fast shots with the glide cam, a great idea is to give it a little bit of forward weight so that it already tilts forward, and as you run, it counteracts that momentum. Another great way to film with the glide cam is to actually flip it upside down and get an entirely new perspective. Can I film your dog for a second? Cool. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So when you're flying with a steady cam or glide cam, it's really important as you're beginning to have a wide angle lens. Having a wider field of view is gonna minimize a lot of the bumps and the shakes that you'll see. However, if you do have a telephoto lens, something like an 85, 135 or higher, it gives a really unique perspective as you're flying through the area. Another important idea is to know that you should take off your image stabilization if your lens has it. Otherwise, the glide cam is moving, the image stabilization is trying to counteract it, and the footage will appear very shaky and wiggly in weird ways. As far as holding it, we prefer this method, like this, just regular style. But there are people out there like Devin Supertramp that hold a little more pistol grip style like this out in front. It really depends on uh, your own personal style and whatever feels best for you. It's very common for your arm to get tired as you're holding the glide cam. So they actually make whole vest rigs, which has like a, an arm with like a spring in it that will hold it. So if you've got something much bigger, imagine you've got a red on here with a follow focus system and a monitor. You probably want one of those for longer shoots because you don't want to try and handhold 40 pounds as you're flying through the set. You can get a glide cam. These guys are really good, make a lot of high quality gear. You can get a, a steady cam. Whatever you get, make sure that it's a lot more customizable. We've seen issues where people will buy knockoff glide cams or knockoff steady cams, and you can't really adjust things as well as you would need to to get that perfect fine tune to make sure that the camera is perfectly stable. If you cannot fine tune the, the glide cam or the steady cam, you're gonna have a lot of issues later on when you try and put a bigger package on there and try and move it comfortably through the scene, but you can't fine tune it and it's all wobbly and wiggly and it just causes issues. So whatever you get, I really recommend you make sure that's something that you can fine tune. 
The Glidecam, a really incredible tool that has absolutely revolutionized the industry. However, as you can tell, it's being superseded by things like the Ronin M, the Movi, and even the Came TV, which is dirt cheap. But whether you decide to use the Glidecam, the slider, the monopod, or any other piece of equipment on your set, we really recommend really thinking out exactly what your shot is gonna be and what kind of emotion that's gonna put forth towards the viewer. Another quick tip that I wanna talk about is having a standardized plate. We like to use the Manfrotto plates, and so we've got this Manfrotto plate that will connect our cameras to either the glide cam, the slider, or the monopod, which saves invaluable time on set. So whatever system you end up going with, make sure that getting in between all of your pieces of gear is as easy as can be. So with that being said, you know, I hope you guys learned a bunch. Enjoy, go out there. I really want you to take all this and just create lots of videos. The best way to learn is just to go out there, get your hands dirty, and get a real world experience with all the gear. So go out there, purchase a brand new piece of gear, have a ton of fun with it, understand how it affects the viewer, and uh, make some dope videos. Peace. Woo!